Welcome to the Whiteberg City Update. Please stand by for the top stories. Your top stories are work continues on the Grand Royal Park and Greenwich House gets the foundations. Those were your top stories. Please stand by. Well guys, welcome back to another one of these updates. So we're back around here by the churchyard again and all of the work we managed to get in here last time along with those townhouses over there, pacing them in via Lightmatica and also World Edit in the end. And what you're seeing in front of me here is all of the work we've recently done to the park now. This is probably about a quarter, maybe a little bit under, maybe a fifth actually of the entire parkland and you can't actually see the rest of it. It's over there behind the mist. Now this is actually a collaborative project between myself, Lanwen, Goblin and Sir Lancelot. So Sir Lancelot actually came on and added in one of these, a little bandstand. Now this is great. And it's inside the big old gardens here outside of what will become Greenwich House. So you see that line of trees over there? Yeah, that's where the building's gonna go, just on the other side of this path. Now I'm stalling to turn Lightmatica on because it's gonna kill my PC as we already know all the time with this, um, but I will now turn it on so we can actually see what's the plan for today. Okay, it looks like it's stabilized now and there it is in its full beauty. So you may notice a few of these lying around. These are the gate posts to go into the private garden. Now the gardens that surround Greenwich House are open weekly to the public, uh, but on the weekends they are closed. Uh, only for private functions and all of the likes. So you can see all of this purple stuff shouldn't be here. So I need to go through and drag out all of this landscape. Uh, actually bury it down another couple of blocks as well to get in where all that red's coming through. But you can see this little stable block over here is um, for the private use of the mainly the Prime Minister and his family. Uh, yes, the Prime Minister isn't a royal. You could be sort of shocked by that, the fact he's living in what looks like a palace. Actually, it looks even bigger than the palace it's based on. Um, but yeah, this is just a little private stable block, which we'll see in more glory. Oh yeah, I forgot to put a car inside here as well, once it all comes in. Now, this isn't based on anything, again, with the rest of the building as well. It's kind of just plopped out of my head based on ideas around what Brock stuff should look like. And yes, there are statues of myself on all four corners. Of course there would be. Uh, now, we haven't really come around this side before, so I thought I'd come around here quickly and to sort of show off what's happening this way. Uh, what you can't see is what's going to be on this side of the road, and that's probably going to be for next time's update. So hopefully we can get the entirety of this built in this video. Uh, and obviously, obviously you guys will see that when it becomes a time lapse in the future. So I think a bit of stalling is over there. What needs to happen now is I'm gonna go through and take out all of the grass where it needs to actually have the paths in there, put in the paths, put in the rest of the mow, and then we can get the rest of the team back on, hopefully, and we can come through and add the rest of the, uh, the trees, the greenery, and all of the parkland around before we crack on with the main building. I cannot wait to get that first like corner in, just so we can see it again. Uh, now, you may be wondering, why stairs down here? Um, so stairs are a great way of getting a big old rustication in, but I'm tempted, very tempted actually, just to change it to uh, stripped logs. So let me show you, like, so instead of having it as stairs, we could have it as stripped logs uh, doing that. So I just need to turn that one round. Um, that could work. I mean, it's not as harsh of a rustication, um, but I, I, th th these are the thoughts that go through my head when I when I do stuff like this. Because you can see here, this is nice and deep. You get those lines in there, those ridges. But I, I do think this looks a bit tidier. Um, we will, we will, I will debate with the build team as to what looks better. But mm, I think that, to be honest, I think I might, I think I might go for the left-hand one. We will see. But oh, look at this place. Just standing around here now, it's all really coming to life. I've just seen a beautiful view. Ooh. So when you're standing here on this path, you've got that tree that overarches, causing a nice little frame around those townhouses there. Guys, this place is really coming together. Right, well anyway, I will join you back in a bit um, when we've actually got some work done on the parklands, some more of the paths in, and then we can start laying that foundation block on camera so we can all see it started. Right, I'll join you once we've done a bit more work. Well, this is, <laughs> so guys, some, some progress has been made. As you can see, I have turned the shaders on now and look at my glorious face. <laughs> so yeah, these shaders I'm using currently here are Chapatic 13 version 9.1 Extreme Beta 5. You'll be able to find it somewhere online. If not, I'll put a link down below. And what I wanted to do was kind of give you an update on where we're at 
with the whole project currently. Uh, these aren't the shaders I normally use, and um, they're incredible, aren't they? Let's take a quick little fly around the whole place. It's really not that framey, actually, compared to what I thought it might be. Uh, anyway, we're not down here to gawk at all of these buildings just yet. You'll get a chance to see all that later. Um, I, I kind of just logged back on and I had these shaders on still because we were taking some screenshots last night. Um, because progress has been made. So if we come up here to the Mao, you can see that it's now fully decorated. There's all sorts of planters down the center. We've got cars and horse and carts and lights and everything. Le Speaking of lights, let me quickly show you. Right, it's time to get spooky in here. Oh my God, it's really pitch black. But wait for it. Wait for it. Oh my God. Isn't that excellent? So what's happening here is in this version of 1.17, you get things called the light blocks. Now, I haven't got any on me, I don't think. Right, so a quick jump cut later. We're still in the dark here. Um, I've actually come to the workshop, which you're not allowed to see. It's private. But what I'm holding in my hand here is glowing nicely. Let's go back. Um, the light block is a new block available in Java uh, that came about in 1.17. Now, I can't remember the command off the top of my head, and I probably should have searched it up. But I will leave a link in the description to a video that helped me get these blocks. Now, they allow you to place blocks of light around. So you can see all of these glowing things up here. Without this on, you will not see it. It will slowly fade and they'll disappear. But they'll leave, obviously, their nice ambient glow. And this is just a great way of doing it. Now, I believe Bedrock had this for ages. And it was just a great way of making maps and stuff. But here, we now finally have these light blocks, which means all of our lampposts, which are just made out of glass, actually now have the ability to shine light. All right, enough looking at the nighttime. Let's have a look in the daytime. All right, so here we are back in the daytime again. And I just love these shades. I love what they do to my face. Um, still, this is this is the progress we've made. I'm going to show you it all in the shaders. I know you normally use BSL, but... Um, I'm just in love with these right now. So you're coming across what is actually my favorite view in the entire complex at the moment, this view here. Come on guys, just look at it. Currently, this is my desktop background as well because why not? Now the elephant in the room is obviously the missing centerpiece. Uh, you can now see we have built the whole park around it and it's really starting to come to life now. All of these crisscross paths in here, trees all the way around the outside that are Goblin went round and placed in. Now he's also changed some of the biomes on the trees. So you get a nice little texture, a little bit of difference in there, breaks up a bit so all the leaves aren't exactly the same color. I think that works really well. Now I'm just gonna sort of fly around here and breathe in the views because there are some beautiful views around here. Oh my God, the domes. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna probably pop back in a bit to the grand ceremony, which would be placing the block down on that corner over there that corner right there, and we'll have a whole sort of, I don't know, might put a sign on there saying block was placed such and such day, just to make it feel a bit cooler. Now, as you can see, all of the trees around the outside, but this isn't the whole park. The parkland actually stretches further out towards the back here. Uh, there'll be another line of trees along that side, and all the way out to that building there. Now, that building there is actually a church, um, which was cut in half when we removed the original um, site. Uh, so when, when we finally put the buildings back in, this is all going to get pasted in. It'll look nice again. But yeah, as you can see, this building is huge. Now, I measured it across. It's 259 blocks center to center, you know, across the center. It's massive. So we'll get that going in a bit. Now, before we jump off of this clip, I'm going to turn the shaders off, and we're going to go stand over there. So far, the views you've seen have been, you know, pretty incredible if I do say so myself. The view you're about to see is going to be very different. Um, well, it's gonna carry on the same theme. All of this has been pretty much built by Goblin, with the exception of a few buildings that I will explain. Welcome to the rest of the Mao. Um, this is how we wanted Whiteberg to look. As you can see, it is just more and more buildings following the same pattern ideas and main architectural style. So on this side here, we have a row of Regency terraced houses built by Lan Wan based on those by John Nash. Uh, these are the ones that are sort of are floating over there. You may have caught a glimpse of them. Fully detailed, fully decked out, and there are even like large villas around the backs here. 
I cannot wait to paste this in. This is just epic. It goes along with everything over here so well. Having the trees in place now oh, oh, just gives such a great view. I don't even know what that noise was. Uh, obviously, it's a bit framey still because there's just so much being loaded in. Before we head on down that way, I'm going to take you down this side. So we've got all sorts of buildings for offices to do with the government. This here is the offices of the Minister of Justice. So that's where all the laws are made and, and kept. And that stretches all the way across down here, down Park Lane. Then we come to one of my buildings. And this is the CDP HQ. Cure advert, no. This building here is based on the mansion at the back of the Downing Street. Um, I think it's just called the mansion at the back. And it sits on Horse Guards Parade. And that's a real nice Baroque building. And I've gone for a very liberal use of diorite. And you may be familiar with it. It is actually posted all over social media, this one. Um, and it does extend quite far back along this way. Now, there's a large gap here. And that will be filled up with townhouses once we have the rest of it in. Now, to my left is a large empty space. Um, this isn't actually this level. Welcome to the train station. Welcome to what is actually Nine Elm Station from the original uh, London and South Western Railways company uh, that used to be their terminal station in Lambeth uh, in Nine Elms. Nowadays it's obviously at Waterloo and this place became defunct in about 1840. It was built in 1838. I've brought it back here to life. Um, and what you're seeing is not the actual building of it. There are some issues with debugging stuff in like Maticus. Ignore all of this. Once it comes in, it's going to look pucker, as I do say so myself. And this is actually sitting here as St. Christopher's Park Station, because behind it is going to be St. Christopher's Park, which is sort of our version of St. James's Park that goes on down to the uh, Buckingham Palace. Where in our world, that mall goes on down to the Royal Palace such unnamed, I think we're going to call it Gloucester Palace, uh, the building for which you'll see soon. Um, not not today. But yeah, I've done a bit of detailing inside, and we've got a full sort of full-on... We can't get down there, but let, tell me, you know, I can tell you there's an entire train station down there with four platforms and lots of converging rails. We'll get round to that later on. You'll see that in a later video. And then down here on the end, we have the Trafalgar Pub, which sits overlooking the actual river itself. And this is a beautiful Regency building, which in real life does sit next door to the Royal Naval College. So we thought it would look great here on the side. Let's pop on back up the road. Right, so we're back at the statue of me. I'm not entirely sure which statue this is. Uh, you'll see a few more of those as we go along here. Now, all, uh, you know, obviously all of this will look a hundred times better when it's not here in its ghostly form. Uh, but over on this side, we have another formal office, which I cannot remember the name of. Goblin will tell me in the comments, I'm sure, but it's beautiful. Again, more statues are up there. Now, all of these buildings, apart from this row of townhouses, have been built by Goblin. Yeah, he was on fire during this. He still is, but this one's an interesting one. This is the company's house. So um, every company in Whiteburg has to be registered via this office here. And then behind us here, we have the Royal Exchange, the one that preceded the current one over in uh, the city of London. More domes. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> and then we get to the strange diagonal church over here, built by Sir Christopher Wren. Uh, very interesting one. I will let Goblin explain more about that in a future video. But then we get down to one of the greatest pieces of architecture here, the actual curved Admiralty's arch. So this sits at dividing the governmental side of Whiteburg City and the royal side of Whiteburg City. So when we go on through, when we pass on through these gates, you go on down to the royal side of the Mall as it extends down to the royal palace down there. What statue is this? I don't know. But there are, as we can tell, a few more statues around here. So we have King Charles I, um, the one that was beheaded, uh, again, which is just a... Uh, just me. And over here we have possibly my favourite statues, um, which we will uh, bring back to life when the debugging works on. These are the three muses. Yeah, they're... <laughs> I promise you, I didn't build these. <laughs> and then we have another great statue over here. This is Sir Christopher Wren. Are you, uh, are you sensing a theme here yet? Um, but still, right guys, I think that's enough spoiling stuff for future episodes. We're going to jump on back over there and it's going to start the groundbreaking ceremony for Greenwich House. I'll see you over there. Right, well, here we are then in the top right corner, bottom right corner, one of the corners of Greenwich House. 
and I'm going to be laying down the cornerstone along with putting a sign down here just to say when it was built. Now, this building obviously is based on uh, English Baroque and the styles around that. Now, that sort of came about in the early, late 17th century, early tw and, and 18th century. With that, these buildings were designed. Now, obviously, they took a very long time to get built. So this building was actually, it was originally started, let me just put this down on the sign here, um, construction started 1712, uh, and the king at the time was, actually, who was the king at the time? George, um... I think it was George the first. So we'll put that there. Construction started 1712, George the first. So that's always going to be there now so people can see. I mean, clearly we just made it up on the spot. But this building then took about 20 years to get built. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, and it finally opened in 1730, um, completely finished. Now, there's a little bit of history I haven't really gone into with this building. There was a building here on this site before the house, uh, before this, you know, formidable part of government. This section of the house, the bit that actually looks like Hampton Court Palace without the extra wings, was the house that sat here, and it had clear views down to the river and clear views up there towards the rest of the city. Now, this was owned by royalty, and in the Civil War in 1644, um, the house was seized from the royalty and given to the government as a seat for the new uh, Lord Protector of the Realm. Now, Oliver Cromwell, as you well know, uh, did not survive very long. I think he only ruled for 20 years. And after that, the house wasn't returned to royalty. What royalty did is they gave it to the government of Whiteburg to use as a seat for the then new rank of Prime Minister, First Minister of the Treasury, that sort of thing. And obviously with that, the government kind of went, right, well, we want something a bit grander. So they started designing the whole complex around here. And fast forward to 1730 and it was all built and here we are 200 years later nearly 200 years later still using it so yeah as you can see we've got the first blocks down there's a bit of law a bit of history i'm going to start getting building we'll see you guys with a bit more progress later on okay then guys so i have stopped construction slightly just to show you a quick little update on what's going on yeah we're looking back this way because wait for it <gasps> Here we go. Greenwich House has progressed quite a bit. Uh, as you can see, the central dome is the bit I'm working on currently. And just then I have been working on these two little spires with the domes on, which I stole from St. Paul's actually. And to be honest, I think it works. I liked them and there's actually four of them on this design. I think I showed you that guys before in uh, like the little clip about the back section down here. There's two more that go around that side. But yes, so let's take a quick look at the building in its entirety. So you saw I was down here when we started, down by the little plaque here. Construction started at 12, uh, 1712 during the reign of George I. And then me and Goblin tackled this corner and worked our way up, doing a bit of copy and pasting here and there to progress this build. Because when I was doing it, that's kind of how I did this build anyway. There's so much symmetry in it that you can get away with just doing the copy and the pasting. Uh, and it still doesn't just doesn't take away from anything. The building's still been designed and built. And, and that's exactly how you would do a design, especially when it is, like this, symmetrical. So a few little key details that have actually been added in since the build originally has been done are these five statues around the top here. So up on this on this rotunda, there was nothing. Let me, um, let me turn on the schematic and I can show you what's changed. Right, so I've just endured the worst lag ever, obviously, when I've turned both things on. There it is, the main dome. We'll get around to that in a bit. Uh, but yeah, so what, I've, what we actually did here was change this design up quite a bit. I can show you the original design we had for this section, which actually has like two banks of pilastrades going down the side here. And I didn't think it made any sense because you've got nothing propping up there. Usually you carry the lines up like that, but this one just didn't. And this window was kind of in the wrong place, so me and Goblin... We came about some ideas and ended up putting this nice big window in the center, including these five statues around the front here, which if you aren't already following us, uh, over on Instagram, I've started a new account called the Statues of Whiteberg. And yes, they all feature my face. I mean, it's a running joke by now. Uh, but what happens is each day or each couple of days, I will post another statue on there uh, and explain a little bit more about it. So today, which was Tuesday the 23rd, I posted this one here, which is Sir John Sloan, 
and he is a famous architect who also became president of the Royal Academy. And that's the theme of all five of these statues here. They're all part of the Royal Academy for being presidents for it. Uh, I won't name them all just yet because that will ruin the surprise. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have those five there. Then there can even be posts about these three up here. Those five there and just the hundreds of statues that adorn this building. There are so many. I can't wait to show you them all. Uh, but yes, so guys, now we're going to carry on construction here of the central dome. And I'm going to paste in the interior, which was designed by Wub, who also did the House of the Commons over there and the House of Lords. I've not shown you inside that yet. I'm saving that for the showcase. It is spectacular. I think he did post some stuff on Share Your Builds over on our Discord recently. So if you are, can't wait for that, you can go have a look at those. But yeah, so what I'm going to say is I think this is probably as far as this update video is going to go. Uh, I will carry on building the central section and I'll start my next update video when we get into those courtyards at the back and also onto the stables because there's been so much in this video already and we can talk more about the pit in the next episode. So guys, remember, get inspired, get building and I'll see you soon. That has been another program from the Whitebergian Broadcasting Company. Please stand by for more programming. Do not adjust your set.